Let's talk a little bit about maintenance because I think we all probably have different mm -hmm. recipes. I know mine is the correct recipe, but you all <laughs> could share your other choices on, on what you like. So uh, I know people do everything from nothing, a pure holiday, um, to a little cape, to Bev alone, to a combination of Cape Bev or 5FU Bev. Tony, I'll start with you and the regular old patient not on a clinical trial, four to six months in or whenever, what, what's your regimen? No, I, I think this is where it's very, very important to actually include the patient in the discussion and mm. patient's preferences are actually important. I mean, ultimately this is a palliative setting. Mm. You know, we're talking about two, three months added if you do this or that. Ultimately, you know, uh, those patients are going to succumb to their disease at some point. And I think having uh, a time for uh, uh, toning down the regimen, so maintenance or even a complete break is not unreasonable. I mean, that discussion ha is, uh, 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 is cognizant of patient preferences, but also if the patient, for example, had a really good response, a complete response, which, you know, about 9 to 10 percent of the, our patients do have a complete response, I'm actually inclined to go to a maintenance uh, regimen for two to four what do you months. Use? Infusional 5-FU, BEV, or, or Capecitabine, BEV, either or. Um, and then uh, if everything continues to be uh, controlled, I sometimes, or many times, give patients a complete break and just monitor them and restart uh, the same regimen. Uh, I, I tend to have a trigger finger, whether it's Fulfiri or Fulfox, after four to six months, to you should get rid of the oxali or the iri and just go on a maintenance and then the holidays are sugar on top. Yeah, I use the Cairo 3 approach, it's sort of yeah. chronic low dose cape. Yeah. Uh, Q3 yeah. week Bev is often mm -hmm. what I do. Yes? Um, you yes. like that recipe? I get trouble though with getting the copays, mm. right? Yeah. Getting cape cytopine yeah. for the patients. That throws always a wrench into things. So I tend to start with the infusional 5-FU and then push the cape cytopine later. That's all going to go away when Donald Trump is president. So. Um, <laughs> What do, you, you, what do you like? So I personally used, I follow the data from the Cairo 3 data you mentioned. I use capsidabine and bevacizumab. I think there are a lot of data out there, Optimax study, but out of those, probably the Cairo 3 is probably one of the more robust data. So I think I used uh, capsidabine and bevacizumab after four to six months, all depending on how the patient's responding. You know, if the patient responds after four cycle, after four months, I try to milk it more, give more chemo to see if I could get down a further re reduction of tumor. But otherwise, at the end of four to six months, due to neurotoxicity, eventually you have to change over to some kind of maintenance therapy. If yeah. useful. I think the trick for me, I agree totally, is that is that you know you got to you, you. It's our fault when people get neuropathy in some way. So pulling that trigger. What do you guys? What do you well, like you to know, do? Well, you know, you mentioned the Cairo study, and and you talk about the idea of of stopping everything. I look at that data and say it's really you're going to reduce survival if mm. you stop everything. That's Maybe not mean. enough. Maybe it doesn't matter, mm -hmm. but it, it is less. And it's so double, right? The progression free is four versus eight months. So yeah, and eight know, months is I a long it, time, it, right? It for is. For so I medicine. certainly stop the oxali, the rena tecan. Mm -hmm. I don't particularly encourage them to stop everything. Certainly if they want to take a trip to Hawaii and they want an extra few weeks, fine. But in terms of genuinely stopping all therapy, I tell them that the data we have in those comparisons of maintenance therapy do suggest there's a better outcome if you do some measure of maintenance. Okay, the hardest question today we face is, stage four, no evidence of disease. So we've already confessed that, yes, we cure some of them, but not most of them. Mm -hmm. We're going after funky lesions here and there. So to me, is this maintenance? Is it adjuvant? Do we leave them alone? Um, what, I just, I don't, I don't think there is a right answer. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna, you get to go first. Richard, what do you do in this so setting? So I think the case where a patient, you give chemotherapy, patient goes under radiographic CR by PET scan or CAT scan, there's definitely data from MG annual series when they go back and biopsy those samples that about 89% still had viable cells in there. So I don't think uh, CR in, from CAT scan, PET scan means cure. But so what about resected? Well, resected, well, after resection and after patient NED afterwards, I agree there's some data what to do after. What do you do? Give, most patients. Four liver lesions mm -hmm. resected CEA3 went from 800, three post op, scan negative, four liver lesions, synchronous liver mets. So it's a I, high risk relapse patient, right. right? I give almost like a stage three patient, give six months of full fox, then I stop after. So you give adjuvant therapy? Mm -hmm. Yep. Adjuvant? No. Nothing? No. What do you <laughs> do? <laughs> Nothing. Watch them? You know, I'm not sure that you're actually going to change their course. Uh, and, and, and the data, of course, from the ORTC study and the EPOC too, you know, does not really uh, uh, confirm a significant survival advantage. If anything, a slight 
PFS advantage at three years doesn't translate into an OS advantage for the clearly resectable. So why don't you get maintenance? Why would you? I don't know. Feels right to me. Well, uh, it's I, what I, I would do if it was my so, disease. So, but personally, I, I I can't say that this is the wrong approach. Yeah. The same there's way no I can defend my approach as well, as saying there's lack of good data. So either or is is right. I mean, this is where clinical your clinical experience and clinical acumen trumps actually data because the data is really not solid one way or the other. Yeah, I give adjuvant. I mean, I, I agree with you, Tony, that the ERTC study, which looked at giving Folfox in conjunction with hepatic resection, didn't show an OS benefit. The problem is it's a small study, right? They were never going to get a survival benefit. There are not enough patients in the trial. There's certainly a trend in terms of uh, disease-free survival, so I routinely give adjuvant.